Do you need a bit more touch in your project? Well, fear not, because I have here the device for you. This cute little guy is an MPR121 touch sensor board. In short, it's an IC that allows you to connect 12 capacitive touch sensors to a microcontroller using the I2C communication protocol to send messages back and forth. In my case, I'm using it with a Teensy LC microcontroller to expand the capacitive touch capability for finger sensing on the electronic valve instrument I'm building. This is roughly what the instrument is probably going to look like, as I'm basing it on the design of the new EVI made by Berglund Instruments. I'll link it in the description. On the top, we have eight finger pads. The three flat ones are for trumpet-like finger patterns, while the standing up ones are for trills, making certain awkward finger combinations more accessible. The two smaller pads to the left and right of the main three are going to be customizable for certain things like jumping a predefined number of notes or changing the voice of the instrument mid-performance. For example, I might set one so that I can turn on and off my backing track for a sneaky solo. There's also one long pad that wraps around the end of the instrument, and it's used for jumping the note by a perfect fifth. Now, I'm afraid to say I'm not really a musician, and I only have an inkling that it's something important for trumpet playing, and in the case of this instrument, relates to being able to play a full octave without having to change the octave selector. You might recognise the perfect fifth jump in the first two notes of several popular songs, such as the Star Wars theme, or Scarborough Fair, and the ABCD song. I've linked a video in the description that explains what you're hearing better than I could. I've hooked the Teensy up to the serial monitor on the Arduino IDE here, so you can see that the MPR121 is detecting each pad touch. Unfortunately, pin 6 on my module seems to be halfway between life and death, and it sometimes shows up as me touching both pins 5 and 7 when I touch it. Thankfully, its dodginess doesn't seem to be affecting the functionality of pins 5 and 7 as individuals. I suspect it might be a problem with the soldering on the IC package, but I don't have a hot air rework station which would be needed to fix it. I only have my Hakko 888D. Luckily for me, the EVI design only needs 9 pads to cover what I need it to, so my defective board is just fine. It serves me right for buying the cheapest one I could find on eBay. The module's pretty easy to hook up to the Teensy. It's really just 4 wires and 2 resistors that you need. Two wires to connect the serial data, SDA, and serial clock, SCL, bus lines, while the other two are just for power and ground. Pull-up resistors are needed for the Teensy LC to pull the I2C lines up to 3.3 volts when the Teensy is not driving them low. This is to stop the wires floating at some unknown voltage, and is pretty commonly found in data transmission systems. My code for this setup is also pretty straightforward. All the hard stuff is taken care of by the MPR121 library provided by Adafruit, and this has saved my butt and surely countless other butts. I have to say a big thank you to the people who developed these open source tools. The most interesting thing going on in this code is probably on line 29. What I'm doing here is called bit masking, and is a really handy technique that comes up whenever you need to check the state of one bit in a larger code word. The line contains two special things called operators. The first is the bitwise AND operator, and the second is the left shift operator. The bitwise AND operator is used to compare each bit in one codeword with the corresponding bit in a second codeword. If they are both 1s, then the result is a 1 as well. This table is called the truth table for the Boolean logic AND operation. The shift operator, on the other hand, is used to shift the codeword left or right, padding the created spaces with zeros. This is the left shift operator, but there's also a right shift operator which just moves in the opposite direction. When you combine the two, you can shift the bit mask, a code word containing a single one, to a specific position and pick out that bit from the code word that you want to mask. In my code, each iteration of the for loop shifts the mask by one more space, so it picks each position in the pins touched code word sequentially. Each position corresponds with a pin being touched on the MPR121 board. By printing out the index of the for loop, if the pin corresponding with that bit was read as a logic one, I get a printout on the serial monitor of all the pins that are currently being touched. There's actually a pin on the MPR121 that I haven't mentioned yet. It's labelled IRQ, which is shorthand for interrupt request. This pin gives an alternate way of letting the microcontroller know when a pad has been touched. In the code in my demonstration, I'm doing something called polling, which is essentially where the microcontroller asks a device again and again to give it an update. This isn't the most efficient way of acquiring data, because it keeps the microcontroller busy, constantly asking for data even when nothing's changed. 
There's another downside to pulling, which is that it's power inefficient too. It keeps the microcontroller needlessly busy, and therefore dissipates extra power as waste heat. The IRQ pin, on the other hand, allows the device collecting the data, called a peripheral device, to tell the microcontroller when it has a change to report. This is way more efficient generally, as it lets the microcontroller get on with other things in between changes in the state of the peripheral device. I haven't implemented interrupts in this example, partly because I didn't need to, and mostly because I don't currently know how to. I might well need to change to an interrupt system when I program the final EV, as the microcontroller will be required to do other things like read the breath pressure and pitch bend sensors. But that's all for another video. I hope you enjoyed watching this and maybe learned something new today. As always, if you enjoyed it and think it deserves it, please do drop a like on the video and comment if you want to. If you want to keep up to date on the progression of the project, hit the subscribe button too. As always, stay safe and have a great day.